Well, hello there, you scrub lords, and welcome to another DevBlog Chats. I know it's been a while since I've done one of these, and this is your host, Many Miles Away. And before we get started, I wanted to give a quick shout out to my Discord server, to which there is a invite link down below. I use Discord to interact with you guys on a more regular basis, in a more personal way, answer questions, and squat up with my viewers during my live streams occasionally. If you want to hang out and meet like minded fans, join the server, scroll up to the hashtag request perms channel, and after reading the rules, type at admin slash banhammer requesting basic scrub permissions. You will then be granted access to the rest of the server channels to discuss, play, mingle with other fans and other content creators that happen to stop by from time to time. Now, with that out of the way, let us begin to examine and discuss the development history of the newly announced Leopard 2K, also known as the Kampfpanzer Keile. The beginning of our story goes back to the development of the KPZ main battle tank. It was rapidly becoming clear to the Bundeswehr that the KPZ-70 was simply becoming too expensive for either the US or the still recovering West German economy to handle. The vehicle had gone from a projected $80 million budget to over $300 million, with each vehicle costing both nations over a $1 million in 1960s currency to produce. The problem with this development program was that the West German government had signed a contract with the United States restricting brand new main battle tank development by their own nation. As a result, the West German government looked to the Porsche Automobile Company to research cheaper and more effective options to improve the Leopard main battle tanks already in service. This allowed Germany to begin development of a new AFV without breaching the contract already signed with the Americans. By 1969, the writing was on the wall for the MBT-KPZ-70 program. Helmut Schmidt, the current German defense minister at the time, decided to take some of the lessons and data gathered from the MBT-70 program to produce a new combat vehicle that would incorporate the improvements to the Leopard main battle tank. One of the first two prototypes built picked up the nickname Keile, or Wild Boar, which continued the tradition of the German military giving their armored vehicles animal names. As part of the program, it was decided to continue using the already developed 1500 horsepower MTU PT873 diesel engine developed for the KPZ-70, paired with a rank HSWL-354 transmission. This resulted in the Kampfpanzer Keile having a power to weight ratio of 30 horsepower per ton, which makes the vehicle, despite ending up weighing almost as much as the KPZ-70, incredibly mobile and quick to accelerate to its top speed of 70 kilometers per hour, or about 43 miles per hour. To get the most bang for their buck, Helmut Schmidt then ordered 17 prototypes to be built. Ten of these would be armed with a 105mm gun, with the other seven armed with Rheinmetall's new 120mm Glatrorkanone. Glatorkanone simply means smooth cannon or smooth bore. The latter would become legendary as the new standard 120mm tank gun of NATO for its next generation main battle tanks. In addition to the new guns, the 17 prototypes ordered were to have a wide range of other modifications to see which combinations worked best. Some prototypes received extra armament in the form of an RH-202 20mm anti-aircraft cannon mounted on the rear of the turret, while others were given hydropneumatic suspension. However, not all prototypes were built with these features. In the early 1970s, Germany was finally able to drop out of the development of the MBT-70 program, which allowed them to now focus their efforts upon their Kyler project. It was at this point that the project was redesignated as Leopard 2. Later on, the Leopard MBT was also renamed to Leopard 1 to help differentiate the vehicles. In 1972, this new pre-series project would be adopted as Leopard 2K, and work began to test two new suspension systems. One had an experimental torsion bar suspension with friction dampeners, with the second featuring the complex hydropneumatic suspension system from the KPZ-70 project. The vehicles were put through extensive testing at the Bundeswehr Proving Grounds No. 41, near the German city of Trier, situated on the western border with Luxembourg. It was after the exhaustive testing completed here that the decision was made to drop the hydropneumatic suspension held over from the KPZ-70 project. Between 1972-73, to 73, the 16 prototypes went through exhaustive testing at Proving Ground No. 41. However, beginning in March of 1972, Leopard 2Ks were sent to train with infantry units at Test Site No. 91 up near Meppen, close to the border with the Netherlands. Units were also shipped to Canada to test the vehicles in winter conditions and in the Arizona deserts of the United States to test extreme midsummer temperatures, which could get as high as 51 degrees Celsius or 115 degrees Fahrenheit. As testing continued throughout 1973, the Yom Kippur War between Israel, Egypt, and its Jordanian allies finally proved to the Germans that armor protection was paramount to a vehicle's survival and effectiveness on a modern battlefield. 
This urged Kralis Mafai, the company in charge of the vehicle's production and development, to introduce an armor package known as the MLC-60 specification, which essentially gave the Leopard 2K an interior-spaced armor package similar in concept to the KPZ-70, which raised the weight to just over 50 tons. As an interesting side note, the US during this period actually outright purchased one of the Leopard 2K prototypes, which would go on to influence the development of the XM1, the Chrysler version of which would go on to be adopted as the M1 Abrams, still in service with the US military to this day in its improved variants. Ironically enough, it was this purchase and subsequent testing by the Americans that prompted them to ask Kraus Maffei to modify their vehicle to new US specifications that featured improved armor protection among other smaller changes. This created what is known as the Leopard 2 AV, or Austia version. It is at this point, however, that I will stop the development history and switch over to the next discussion, the gun we see on the vehicle in War Thunder. Now, the version of the Rheinmetall 120mm smoothbore that we see mounted to the vehicle is the early pre-production model, which features extra material at the end of the barrel, which was removed later on to save weight and increase the accuracy of the fire control systems of later tanks, as this diagram provided by the suggestion post of the Kampfpanzer Keiler shows. As far as ammunition types and performance, there is a good possibility of seeing the following two ammunition types in-game. The first is the DM-13 AP FSDS round. This kinetic energy round features a 4.6 kilogram, 38 millimeter diameter penetrator with a muzzle velocity of 1650 meters per second. At 500 meters, this round was capable of perforating 470 millimeters of unangled rolled steel armor. The incredible part about this round's penetrating power, however, was that it maintained a penetrative capability of 390 millimeters of unangled armor at 2,000 meters, making this the highest penetration of any kinetic energy round seen so far. Even outperforming the L11 120mm gun on the Chieftain main battle tank with its APFSDS round. And I should also add to this, uh, just post script and outside the script, that the APFSDS round did not use depleted uranium. The Germans refused to use depleted uranium and prefer to use what they call Wolfram, which is really just tungsten. And also, this is the first version that was actually adopted into production by the German military. This is the first APFSDS round for the 120mm gun. And it's incredibly powerful and more powerful than anything we've ever seen yet. So keep that in mind. The other ammunition type available is the DM-12 Heat Metzweckgranate, or the heat multi-purpose round. This is essentially a heat FS round featuring a fragmentation sleeve to allow it to be used as a slightly less effective high explosive round, as well as a shaped charge weapon to penetrate armor. This eliminates the need for Hesh, which was rapidly becoming obsolete with the greater proliferation of composite and spaced armor solutions meant to defeat it. The round has a muzzle velocity of 1140 meters per second with the capability of penetrating up to 700 millimeters of unangled rolled steel armor at any range. Now, I originally said that there were only two ammunition types that we are likely to see, and I'm still right. However, while I was researching the ammunition, I found references to a DM-11 120mm high explosive round, which offered greater performance than the DM-12 heat multi-purpose round against soft targets and fortifications. However, the Bundeswehr, the German military, opted not to use this ammunition and stick with the heat multi-purpose round for their soft target needs. This was most likely to avoid the added logistical and training strain required by the introduction of a third ammo type. Think about it, if you've only got two ammo types, that's a lot less that you have to worry about when supplying these vehicles. Now as a final little factoid for the ammunition used by this gun, the casings for the ammunition are actually semi-combustible, meaning that when the gun fires, only the brass base of the shell is ejected from the gun. This allows the turret to be smaller and eases the workload on the crew in terms of shell casing ejection. However, this does prohibit the ability to lap load like the Chieftain can, and as a result could potentially have a detrimental effect on the reload speed. Now with all that said, how do we think the vehicle will perform in War Thunder? Well, if its statistics are to be believed and implemented properly, the vehicle will easily be just as good if not superior to the KPZ-70. The gun should feature a higher rate of fire than the 152mm gun launcher of the KPZ-70, with vastly improved accuracy of the APFSDS over longer distances. While we won't know the exact thickness of the armor until the dev server, a member of my Discord server has shared the potential effective armor for the Leo 2K. As you can see, it is far less protected than the KPZ, but remains about the same weight. So why play the Leopard 2K over the KPZ-70? Well, most of its practical differences come down to the gun and the suspension. 
The version we will have in War Thunder will not be equipped with the Hydro Pneumatic Suspension as seen on the KPZ-70. However, the gun is overall much better and features superb ammunition types. Regardless of which shell is selected as the stock round, both are more than capable of penetrating anything you will face at 9.0 battle rating. The mobility between the two vehicles is approximately the same since the weight and power plant are similar if not the same. Another major difference, however, is the potential gun depression. While I could not find any numbers, it looks like the Kylie will be restricted to between 6 and 8 degrees of gun depression, which is severely lacking compared to the KPZ's 12 to 15 degrees using the Hydro Pneumatic Suspension. If anybody has solid numbers on this, please let me know down below in the comment section. As for protection, the armor on both vehicles overall is nothing really special and will not perform well against most threats at top tier. So if you like the Leopard but wanted more firepower, this is your vehicle. If you love the KPC-70 and its mobility, you will love that too. Overall, personally, I believe that this will make a fantastic addition to the German top tier lineup and will provide some extra flexibility when it comes to maneuvering and flanking, as well as just a good alternative to the KPZ-70, which I imagine a lot of people are bored of by this point. And with that, I will wrap up this episode of DevBlog Chats. I realize it's been a while since I've done one of these. However, today I found myself able to do one. Thank you guys for listening, and if you guys made it to the end, please, again, check out my Discord server, link down in the description below, and hopefully I will see all of you guys on there. Without further ado, this is Many Miles Away. Keep your tracks checked, keep your bonnets in place, keep around in the tube, and I will see you guys in the next video.